Today we're going to go in and look at verse 11 and 12 of um, Hebrews chapter 11. And he's all talking about Sarah. It says, by faith, Sarah, herself, not talking about Abraham. We talked about Abraham's faith. Abraham had his faith. But we're talking here about Sarah. Sarah also received strength to conceive seed by faith. Right? Uh, she received strength to conceive seed by faith. Question, what, how did she receive that by faith? You know, you know each time we talk with the prophet talks about this time next year, you will conceive. Uh, that's not the end of the story, right? A prophet, any prophet can say that, but it's not going to come to pass if the person being said to does not do their own part, right? Say Abraham and Sarah never slept together. Isaac is not going to get born, right? It took faith for Sarah to still sleep with Abraham with the hope or intent of conceiving Isaac, right? So that took faith. The Bible here says that uh, our time of childbearing had passed, right? But a word, a prophecy says that she was going to conceive, right? And because of that word, she did our own part in bringing about the conception, you know? And that's a problem, a challenge with a lot of us, right? There's God's word. God's word has said something about what will come to pass in our lives. But that is not the end of the story, right? Every promise of God requires something of us. If we don't do our part, his promise will not come to pass in our life, right? So for every promise God has given to us, it's up to us to find out and ask, what is required of me to bring this um, promise to pass in my life? Because there's really no promise of God that's automatic. Every promise of God comes with a prerequisite. And if you don't fulfill that prerequisite, the promise will not come to pass in your life. Because God will never go against our free will, right? Our free will, our agency is the greatest gift God has given to every one of his creation. By that gift, we can, as it were, override God in this life, on this earth, right? And God allows that because it is by what we do with that gift that we will be judged, we are either going to be judged rightly or wrongly. I mean, we're either going to be judged to receive life or judged to receive death. And because God is a just God, God is a perfect God, he will not influence our decision because our decision is a criteria for judgment. If God influences anybody's dis decision, then he needs to do that for every single person. Otherwise, it stops being a just God. But we will never find an instance to hold God to ransom from, him, from his being just. Therefore, God Almighty will not force his will against any one of his creation. Right? And that helps us also in understanding scriptures because there are some scriptures that are a bit confusing that simply wants to point to the fact that it was because of God. Oh, in the for God, I would not have done that. But that's not true. Because again, the word of God cannot be broken. So the only way we can understand scripture is by scripture itself, right? The Bible says that no word of God is for private interpretation, right? But men wrote as they were, uh, is part of the Holy Ghost, right? And the Holy Ghost is not in confusion or division with itself. The Bible says that the, the, the word, the spirit, you know, and the, and the father, they agree, right? And the word of God is settled. 